and advised. Hmm? Yeah. You've seen that? You, are, you have noted it, huh? And I see, I see. So, any other on page five? Member for Sunny Mentoring. Um, members debated on page five um, on the ensuring debate. Um, you have members debated on the motions. And the one, number one, you have the Honorable Bileji Tunkara, Majority Leader for Kantora. Um, not majority, majority Leader and Kantora. Okay, where you have ensuing debate, number one, Honorable Bileji Tunkara, Majority Leader and Member for Kantora. Yes. Honorable Member, still on page five, any comments or observations? Okay, we now move to the last page, page six. No comments? Yeah, member for Combo East. Honorable Speaker, I still, I'm still being omitted here, but the list of uh, members that contributed on the debate. Honorable Speaker, we want everyone to be noted. Honorable member, you, you, you omitted again for those who contributed during the debate. Yes. Okay. The table of noted and your name will be inserted. Any other comments on page six? Okay. We come, we finish the Record of votes and proceedings for the 12th of September, 2022. Honorable members, All right, honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Monday, 12th September 2022, be adopted with amendments. Those in favor, please say aye. Not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clerk, can we continue with the second one? Correction and approval of records of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 15 September 2022. Honorable members, the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 15 September 2022 is before us for consideration and adoption. Can any honorable member please move that the said record of votes and proceedings be considered and adopted. Any honorable member? Member for Jara Central. Thank you, honorable speaker. I rise to move that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 15th September, 2022 be considered and approved. 
Any seconder, honorable members? Honorable member Bosani. Thank you, honorable speaker. I rise to second the motion. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sittings of Thursday, 15 September 2022 be adopted. Any issue or observations members may make. You can now look at the, you can, we now look at the record of votes and proceedings. And uh, as usual, we will begin, we will do it page by page and we begin with page one. Member for Serekunda West. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Like I said earlier, um, my name is captured as those present on Thursday, Sona, and I wasn't present at all. Where, 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 where? Number six. Number six. Is absent and not present. Uh, honorable members, number six should be deleted. And, uh, honorable member for Sani Mentoring. Um, Honourable Speaker, um, it appears on the <clears throat> on this on page one again um, that Majority Leader for Cantora instead of Majority Leader and Cantora, and <clears throat> also with the Minority Leader, um, it should have been Minority Leader and Member for Brickham North, and then also the same thing applies to um, the Deputy um, Minority Majority Leader for um, All Union Constituency. And then also the same thing applies to Deputy um, Minority Leader for Sarekunda West. Thank you. I take my seat. Thank you. Deputy Minority Leader should be deleted. For number three, four, and five, it should be Majority Leader and a member for Kantora, Minority Leader and member for Bikama North, and Deputy Majority Leader and member for All Yundum. Honorable members, it is noted. Any other comments? Honorable Speaker, what we are putting there, we are simplifying it uh, just by putting back out, et cetera, Willie East, Willie West, et cetera. So uh, if, even if you say majority leader, well, it's Cantora which remains. You don't, you don't go into that's, that's That's the method of writing this. Majority leader? I want to concur with him that we want to rhyme, rhyme it with uh, the previous ones. There is nothing like member for Bakao or Joshua. It's just a uh, honorable member of um, Seni, whatever. You have Bakao. You have honorable member Asanture Bakao. So it's, it's okay in that format. And Kantora and Old Yundum and Serokunda. It's okay. Uh, you're coming back. Um, honorable Speaker, yes. Um, just to simplify it, um, the majority leader. Um, instead of adding an, it either has to be comma, cantora, or for cantora. Thank you. <laughs> English language. Uh, honorable members. Yes, yes, member. Uh... Um, thank you very much, honorable speaker. The reason why the answer should maintain, I am not the majority leader for cantora. I'm the majority leader here in this assembly, not in Kantora. And so when you say and Kantora, it really um, suffice. Thank you. I do, I, 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 do, do you have any other opinions on the matter? I don't know. Majority leader and cantora. It does not. It does not. <laughs> it, the signal is sense for me. Is different from majority leader and member for cantora. For for the others, yes, they have consequency names. Stated there, there is not member of Serekunda consequence or this consequence, just the name of the consequence. 
but you are using your title, either we use majority leader and full stop, but let's hear opinions. Lower, member for Lower Badibu. Pardon? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I believe it should be majority leader, comma, Cantora. Full stop. Yeah? Uh, if you ask my opinion, I would add member for Kandora. That's what I would take. You because are saying majority leader and member for Kandora. Kandora. That flows better than majority leader and Kandora. That sounds very ugly. Uh, Let's maintain that. Member for Fonyi Bintang. Thank you so very much, Speaker. This is why we bent on asking us to speak our language. It's more confusing than anything, honestly. So I, 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 I am not confused when it comes to grammar, because just for understanding. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Member, we are not talking about the language that we are speaking. We are talking about the text. You know, we don't, we cannot, we don't write our languages. Now, honorable members, do we, do we correct it to majority leader and member for Cantora? Yes. So, honorable members, for number three, four, and five, it should be majority leader and member for Cantora, minority leader and member for Brikama North, and deputy majority leader and member for all Yundum. Can we proceed to page two? Combo East. Combo East. Honorable Speaker, um, I've seen the name of Honorable Yaya Gasama. Who? Of Kiang East, showing presence number 35, and he was absent. Number 35, Honorable Yaya Gasama of Kiang East, he said he was absent. Is Yaya around? Is Honorable Member around? He's absent. He was absent. And uh, he was absent on the day itself, huh? Yes. Confirm? Confirmed. Okay, number 35 deleted, honorable members. Any other, Any other observations or comments on page two? Member for Sani Mentoring. Um, honorable Speaker, I heard you asking if yeah, Gasama is, is absent right now. Um, he just stepped out. Well, he was here and he signed in. Thank you. I don't follow you. We have removed his name. They said he was absent. Are you saying that he, he was in? No, I, I knew he was absent on that day. But today, I, I just had you asking if he's around. That's what I'm trying to confirm, that he's here. He just stepped out. Thank you. Yeah, but he's not, he's not around. Stepping out means you are not around. Three. Yes, honorable member for Woolley East. Yes, thank you. Peg three, we have a list for uh, absentees with permission, two people. But we don't have any list for the absent. And the honorable member is saying he's absent, but there is no space here for that. So we should capture that. I, I, you you saying that we have a list for those absent with permission? There is a caption for those with permission, absent with permission. So I say we should have a caption for those who are absent without permission. Because he does not have permission. Who gave him permission? <laughs> Deliberately absent.
And then just that little typo there, under the point of order, D Honorable, the Article D, we just strike that out. This is the second time we are seeing that. The next time we reprimand you when we see it there. All right? Thank you. Honorable member, I share your opinion. I don't know, I don't even know with permission or without permission. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> I'm sure they must have just told, us, told the table office that I'm not coming, and that is permission. And somebody who has not told him that he, I'm not coming doesn't, doesn't have permission to go. That's what I was discussing with him. Permission to go, to absent yourself from the assembly, comes from the speaker. All right? Members have a right to absent themselves for a period of time. You can come and go without permission. You can stay home without permission. But if we are to indicate permit, per, with permission, it has, it, we have to have that on record. And if we have those with permission stated, I think we should also have those without permission, as he stated. What is the way forward? What are you suggesting, honorable member? Will the East? I'm simply saying, just like what you said, we have those with, with, with permission. They are absent with permission. It's mentioned. And we, we also have a caption for those without permission. Because they deliberately absented themselves without any permit. Okay, the table, the table office will note that down and do the, and do the relevant corrections. Any, yes, honorable majority leader and member for Cantora? I think going forward, um, we have to channel and observe the line of authority. Who has the authority to give permission? Table office speaker. So in, in, it has to be in writing to the speaker uh, seeking for permission to stay away from a particular um, session in parliament. So that should be the trend, that, that should be the communication. Rather than informing table office, you write to the speaker for permission. Thank you. Honorable member, you are right. I just discussed with table office, because when he said with permission, I asked him, I think they were notified, but I, I asked him, uh, you, you granted them permission? He said he should notify me. So that one we would regularize, I'm sure. But as I said, like mem a member who does not come to assembly today, you did not tell me. Members have rights to absent themselves for a number of times. But if we are to go out with permission to be indicated, it must be official. It must be official. We will take note of those things and we will regularize it. Table office. Page, page three. Any more on page three? Member for Tumana. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. On the point of order, the Honorable, Hon the Honorable Suleiman Saho, member for Central Badibu, raised a point of order, relying on order 24-2, requesting the president. I think he requested your office, the office of the speaker, uh, not directly, he didn't directly request the president himself. I think it should be, it should be indicated that it has requested from the, speak, the speaker, then the speaker to request the president. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's a valid observation. Yes. Hmm? Because all communications on orders are directed to the speaker. I, I, do you follow that? And yes. honorable member for Lower Nun. Correct. Honorable Speaker, good morning. I have observed that in page three, Letter B, His Excellency the President of the Republic. I prefer the Re Republic of the Gambia. Hey. Uh, use your mic and uh, pay three. Yes, His Be Excellency the President of the Republic. Where, where, where? Pay three, letter B. On the motion. On the motion. 
the sentence should be completed, the President of the Republic of the Gambia. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia. What the Honorable Member is saying is, just after number two motion, yes. you have the State of the Nation address, you have a sentence there. His Excellency, the President of the Republic, he is saying that it should be His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia. Am I right? Yes, That's please. Suggestion. And that sentence continue. Okay. His, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Mr. Adam Abaro of the Gambia again is missing there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Majority Leader. Speaker, I think we need to clarify this issue here. When he says His Excellency, the President of the Republic, is referring to the Gambia technically here, because you have only one republic. Yeah, so basically, and his name is captured, so that suffices the way it is. So I think it's correct the way it is. It's referring to the same republic of the Gambia, and we have only one republic here. Thank you. Member for Serekunda West, Mr. Speaker, I, for me, I think the issue here is, was he the one who moved the motion? Because here, it indicates it's the president who moved the motion. Okay, then, then it's okay. Honorable, honorable member for Serekunda West, you, I, I have not got your point. It's taken care of. I was asking, where is the president who moved the motion? And my colleagues all said yes. I said that it's okay. I'm fine with it. So, honorable members, the, correct, the proposed correction, do we leave it at Republic or Republic of the Gambia? Is there any wrong? Is there anything wrong with His Excellency, the President of the Republic of the Gambia? No. All right, honourable members, and we are still on page three, and I think that's the last page. Member for Banjul Central. Yeah, a slight observation here, Honorable Speaker. Uh, on the motion, on the motion uh, page three, oh, sorry. Yeah, on the motion page three, uh, it states uh, State of the Nation Address 2020. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, on the same page, number two motion, State of the Nation Address 2020 is what is recorded. It should be 2022. Thank you very much, honorable member. Any, Any more? OK. Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the record of votes and proceedings of the National Assembly sitting of Thursday, 15 September 2022 be adopted with amendments. Those in favor, please say aye. Not in favor, please say no. The ayes have it. Clerk, we can continue.
tribute condolences to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II by the Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Majority Leader, and the Honorable Minority Leader. Honorable members, the world, including the Republic of the Gambia, received with great shock the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, which occurred on Thursday, 8 September 2022, in the United Kingdom. As Honorable Speaker of the National Assembly, and on behalf of both sides of this Assembly, and indeed, on my own behalf, I wish to convey our deepest and heartfelt condolences to the Royal Family of the late Queen Elizabeth II, the Honorable Speakers of the House of Parliament, of the Houses of Parliament of the United Kingdom, the, gov the government and people of the United Kingdom, and indeed, the Commonwealth of Nations. It is with humility that the as this assembly joined all parliaments of the Commonwealth to pay tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and to eulogize in, in her memory, and deed, the life of an extraordinary public servant. Her Majesty the late Queen Elizabeth II will be remembered for her sense of humor, charisma, and statesmanship. In the global, global governance structure, most particularly in the Commonwealth for which we are part of as a nation and parliament, she was a citizen and an outstanding leader of the world throughout her reign. The Gambia has special historical ties with England and the United Kingdom, and of course the Queen herself. As, well, as one of the five English-speaking countries in British West Africa, the Gambia gained independence from the United Kingdom at the time of Her Majesty's reign. Though we were the last Anglophone West African colony to attain political independence on the 18th of February, 1965, the Queen peacefully granted our request. It is noteworthy and historic that the late Queen featured prominently in our colonial transition to a Republican status in 1970. There is no doubt that we immensely gained from, his, from her guidance and wise counsel as a nation. Notably, she deeply appreciated Gambia's political history, and thus she made a three-day visit to the Gambia in December 1961. Her Majesty's leadership was exemplary and inspirational. We praise the Almighty Allah for her service to humanity and many lives she touched during her life here on earth. She has faced and over overcame challenges with fortitude and witnessed countless technological advances and human achievements. Once again, honorable members, on behalf of the National Assembly, we extend our heartfelt condolences to the royal family of the late Queen Elizabeth II, the honorable speakers of the Houses of Parliament of the United Kingdom, the government and people of the United Kingdom, and the Commonwealth nations. On this note, honorable members, I wish to request for the Assembly to observe a minute silence in honor of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. A minute silence, honorable members, please.
Thank you, honorable members. May I now invite the majority and the minority leaders to make a statement on behalf of their respective groups, starting with the majority leader. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable speaker, as we mourn the passing of Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II, of great Britain, it is with great sorrow and sadness that I stand before this August Assembly to pray tribute to her after a long life of faith, duty, and service. A great light has gone out, Honorable Speaker. Her Majesty was an exemplary person who lived an extraordinary life as a long and for us to remember through her realms of seven decades of her leadership. Her Majesty was the epitome of duty, stability, wisdom, and grace. Her Majesty has had enormous love and gratitude for the Commonwealth and managed to travel more than any monarch in the history, visiting every part of the family of nation, the Commonwealth of nation, always generous, host, and consummate diplomat. Honorable Speaker, the growth and vibrancy of modern Commonwealth is credit to Her Majesty and a testimony to dedication and wisdom and leadership. In 1974, before she ascended to the throne, she stated that, I quote, my whole life, whether long or short, will be devoted in service. Honorable Speaker, in 1953, Her Majesty defined our family of nation as one which bears no re resemblance to the empires of the past. It is entirely new conception built on highest qualities and of spirit of man, friendship, loyalty, and desire for freedom and peace. To the new conceptions of an equal partnership of nation and races, I shall forever continue to be grateful for the steadfastness and commitment to the values of Commonwealth. Honorable Speaker, Her Majesty's vision for Commonwealth and the beginning of her reign has been fulfilled well by her dedication and commitment, inspired by her life of duty and service. The responsibility to ensure her vision and endures is one we all now share. Her long years of interaction and partnership with generations of the world leaders and their people, particularly the young, gave her extraordinary insights which brought ever more life and meaning of her service. I will miss her greatly. The Gambia and the nation of the Commonwealth will miss her greatly. And the world will equally miss her greatly. We will never see her like again. On behalf of both sides of the assembly, and indeed on my own behalf, I express our profound sadness at her passing and admirations of all she was and enduring gratitude for all that she has given. We send our prayers, love, and heartfelt condolences to the entire family. And it is also gratifying to inform this assembly during her visit in 1961, Her Majesty visited um, Lord Bani Kerewan called Jawara, and uh, there was a, there is still a, a, a well named after her. It does give us the connection on historical background between Her Majesty the Queen and the Gambia. I thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you, Honorable Majority Leader and Member for Kantora. I now invite the Honorable Minority Leader and Member for Bikama North. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. On behalf of the Minority Caucus, and indeed on my own behalf, I join the world in mourning the demise of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as she will be laid to rest today in King George VI Memorial Chapel 
at St. George's Chapel. Queen Elizabeth II live an exemplary life of selflessness, tenacity, and dedication to service. The duty, service, and dedication she demonstrated throughout her reign was not just exemplary, but extraordinary. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II embodied the modern British nation's continuity and unity for over seven decades. She was a rock on which the modern Britain was built. On behalf of the Manitou Caucus of the National Assembly of the Gambia and its wider membership, we offer our deepest condolences to the royal family, the government and people of the United Kingdom, the realms and commonwealth of nations. Our thoughts also extend to our colleagues in the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Representing one of the elements of the United Kingdom Parliament with the House of Commons and House of Lords, Queen Elizabeth II was steadfast in her commitment to parliamentary democracy. In addition to being the head of state, Queen Elizabeth II was also a great supporter of democracy, human rights, and rule of law, and around the world, as she demonstrated on numerous occasions throughout the seven decades of her reign. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth addressed hundreds of parliamentarians from around the world and had always underlined the core values of multilateralism and importance of bringing parliamentarians together to find peaceful methods of solving disputes and to understand each other better. At a time of uncertainty and upheaval in the world, Her Majesty's Saini and unifying presence will be sorely missed by the people of the Gambia and the Commonwealth family. Our thoughts and hearts are with the people of the United Kingdom and all those who are mourning around the world in the difficult days ahead. We pray to Almighty God that Her Majesty's lifetime of service to humanity will be a source of inspiration for the present and future generations of leaders May her soul rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. May her soul rest in peace. Honorable Clark, can we proceed? Most of debate on the State of the Nation Address 2022 by His Excellency the President, represented by His Excellency the Vice President. Thank you, Clark. Honorable members, I recognize the presence of His Excellency, the Vice President of the Republic, representing the President on this debate. Honorable members, may I request that any honorable member who wish to take part in the debate raise his or her consequence tag, and we will be able to record the names. However, before giving any member the floor, may, may we remind ourselves to respect the rules of the debate. On order number 29 of the standing orders, which reads, Every member shall restrict his or her observations to the subject matter under discussion. Furthermore, Order 31 also reads, debate upon any motion or amendment to a motion or upon any bill, part of a bill or amendment to a bill shall be relevant thereto, except in the case of a motion for the adjournment of the assembly. Honorable members, I therefore call on all honorable members to respect and observe the rules as indicated. 
I thank you. I now open the floor for any honorable member who may want to take the floor on, on the debate. Honorable member for Combo South. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. I also want to join you to uh, welcome the Vice President to the debate. And I don't know to what extent did the Director of uh, Parliamentary and Legislative Matters and also the Table Office invited all the other ministers of this great nation. We've said this over and over during the fifth legislature, that we cannot be talking to ourselves here. The ministers have to come and listen to what the members are saying, because that's the responsibility, and we are in for our people, we are representing our people. And the core importance of this, uh, our process, is legislation. So when we are in the chambers, it is important that the vice president and all the ministers are present here to listen to what the members are going to say. Because the president's address anchored on all the ministries, departments, and agencies of this country. So that will also ease the burden on the vice president for the ministers to be here and listen for follow-ups and other engagements with the National Assembly. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity also to thank the president for fulfilling the constitutional requirement of the 1997 Constitution, Section 71 and 2, which stipulates the presence of the President to at least come to the National Assembly once and brief the parliamentarians on the status of programs and activities of the government, and also to share some of the information that have been presented by different ministries, departments, and agencies. Our standing order also 24 call on the president, and this one was more elaborate, Honorable Speaker. It gave a specific time for the president to deliver his presentation. And I think that one we should all try. There again, the director of uh, parliamentary affairs and the table office has clearly started in standing order 24 that the president should do his address, shall do his this address during the first quarter of the year. That is more democratic, and that is what entails in other jurisdictions and other countries that are doing the same thing. Because that will give the National Assembly members the opportunity to follow up and also work with other institutions, departments, and agencies in their oversight visits to be able to follow up all that had been enumerated or said by the president during his address. Looking at our tight schedules, this is the third ordinary session, Honorable Speaker. The fourth ordinary session is geared towards the budget session, which is going to be very tight. And this 2023 budget session is going to be an extraordinary one, because there are a lot of things that we need to look into. So I want to employ on the Director of Parliamentary Affairs and the Table Office to engage the executive so that the President can come to the chambers here to deliver his address to the nation. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, now I'm going into detail on the, what the President has submitted to the Gambian people. I must say, introduction was said and all the things that have been said. But I have not heard any strategy that has been laid by the government in the after effect of COVID-19 that has devastated the nation, which was uh, unexpected. At this time, we should be able to know clearly what are the strategies that the government is going to take so that we are more prepared and post-COVID-19 will be able to do it. The more talk that is going around the world, how far has the Ministry of Health gone with the vaccination of the Gambian citizens? How many people have been vaccinated in this country? And what is the rate? And how do we do to implement these things? All the funds that have been acquired and disbursed to the Ministry of Health 
have not been enumerated, especially the fund that was out of the 750 million or 734 thereabout that went to the Ministry of Health towards the COVID-19. All the details have to be done. Honorable Speaker, I think the report also lacks a lot of statistical data. We have said this over and over. Statistics is the bedrock of development and it helps us to do our planning and help us to go do things as we go along in the implementation of our programs. So I think giving us statistics on the issues and programs that have been said and done will enable us and help us to be able to see where are the gaps and where do we build on so that we are safe as a nation. Because without correct statistical data, it is going to be difficult for us to do real budgeting and also improve the status and livelihood of the Gambian people. Honorable Speaker on finance, that's the bedrock of our entry point. I have not seen what the ministry have not given us the details, the rebound of the, 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 the agenda and also the low rate of uh, uh, budgetary support, what were the details? Why was that uh, not forthcoming as stated in the, in the report? That will also help us to inform us when we come to the preparation of the 2023 budget, are we still going to rely on budgetary support from our partners and donors? If they are not forthcoming, do we still continue to put them in our budget line? So, Honorable Speaker, that's also a thought for the FPAC committee to engage during our bilaterals that will be done in November to ensure that we, we, we take care of these things. Honorable Speaker, another important aspect that has been left out by the Ministry of Finance, the popular vehicle policy. What is the status? The former minister had informed us that the government is reviewing that policy and it will work on it and report back to the National Assembly. Over $300 million has been misused as per the Act. And still now, more budgetary allocations are going to the purchase of vehicles for running into ministries and departments and agencies as pools and also as you to be used by officials that are working in the various ministries, departments and agencies. Honorable Speaker, looking at the constitution, the condition of the country, the economic downtrend that is happening in the world all around, there is a need for this vehicle policy to come back and be looked at so that the three million dollars or above that is being used will go into other uh, service areas, into health, education, and agriculture. Honorable Speaker, I think uh, that's been said. We need to uh, also ensure that when it comes to the centralized services in the budget, I think that's an issue that we need to look at and see how it is being implemented by the Minister of Finance. Honorable Speaker, my next point will be on the Petroleum and energy, as I said, I keep on saying here, Combo South is the biggest constituency in this country, and I want to give some statistics. If you look at the population of Combo South as a constituency, we have over 200,000 people there, 72,000 registered voters, over seven major health centers, the biggest constituency with the national resources that have more than five fish landing sites in this country. Agricultural production is very dear. The land is fertile and everything is there. But we have a big problem with our electricity and water supply. The water supply coming into the greater Banjul area, all the boreholes were dug in Combo South, and we still have major towns in Combo South that are grappling with water supply. So, Honorable Speaker, and I think the Ministry of Energy and Petroleum should look into this so that the people of Combo South, with the fish landing sites, can be able to descale, prepare the fish, prepare them for marketing and also storage facilities that will help the people of Combo South to improve the productivity and the economic status of those people. Electricity is very key and as I said, linking it up to the fisheries production and also vegetable gardening Combo South has the biggest land area for vegetable production in this country. The women vegetable growers are, are, are complaining and they are crying that there are no storage facilities that will enable them to keep their produce, that will help them to be able to bring them out 
to have more money when there is shortage in the market. And those are areas that have been identified. The Vegetable Growers Associations have engaged the Ministry of Agriculture. And the key areas that need to be done is to improve and increase electricity supply in those areas so that, Honorable Speaker, we can have better storage facilities for the old women in their production and also the GIGAF projects and other projects that are coming to encourage women and young school leavers and other entrepreneurs into poultry farming. And those things cannot be done without adequate uh, electricity supply. So Combo South, as I said, is an area that we need to see and we need to look at it in all our development aspects, as you said. As I said, and I said, as I said, the statistical data, if you look at all the whole of LRR, all their votes together, Combo South alone is more than them by 17,000 votes, all the six constituencies in LRR. So that's why it is important that any development that is going to be done, looking at these key areas, we need to be able to do it to improve and the improve the income intake of the people. Honorable Speaker, coming to agriculture, and as I said, that also brings me back to Combo South again. It has the biggest land cover. The soil is fertile. The president talked in his speech about the tractors. But I don't think the ministry or those who prepared the report have given him the details of those tractors, how they were distributed, and what is behind the distribution. What are the, how are the farmers going to generate or to have access to those tractors? Who are managing those tractors? The funds that are derived, what are they going to do to improve the agricultural production of our farmers? That is the bedrock of our community and our country as a developing country. And if we said 75% of our production is coming from agriculture. Honorable Speaker, both the President and the former member of the National Assembly of Lower Badibu have said during the President's tour that fertilizer that was supposed to go to the farmers have been taken by unscrupulous people to unknown destinations, and nothing is being said, Honorable Speaker. Where we are now, farmers have been complaining the rainy season is just ending because of the high rate of the fertilizer. Nothing is happening. So, Honorable Speaker, I think those are areas that one need to look at, and we need to get the farmers at the center of our development program if we want to make move as an, a country and to end so that agricultural production is at the best stage and so that the farmers can be alleviated in poverty that they have been struggling over the last 50 years. Honorable Speaker, coming into defense, and I'm going to go back again, most of our communities on the West Coast as a, a fishing communities, most of them are becoming cosmopolitan towns now, Gunjur, Sanyang, Katong, Tanje. A lot of people are coming in and out. All the police stations on the West Coast, on the coastline in Combo South, are without proper vehicles that will enable them to patrol and do their work efficiently. The only military post that we have in that area is in Katong. And they think, I think there is a need for them to spread and also increase the presence of the military personnel along the coastlines from Katong right down to Brufut, because Brufut is the last is the last one that Tanje and Brufut are just very close. To Brufut is in San Mentre. Because there are a lot of activities, there is a lot of insecurity, a lot of young people had been killed over just only in 2021. About 20, uh, five young people were killed along that coastline. And the one that is more had disheartening and also is still a pain is the killing of Buba Jame of Gunjur by um, somebody who had not been arrested and taken to mile two prisons to wait for trial, they opened the door for that guy to escape. Nobody knows where that guy is. And that is a pain in the family. So this shows the lapses in the security apparatus of this country, Honorable Speaker. And he talked about the, the, the interior, the Ministry of Interior, and as I said, the issue of the police need to be looked into. The collection of funds, all these institutions collecting more funds uh, that are collecting funds. What, are the, what is the government doing to ensure they appropriate certain amount towards the development and the running of their programs? All the police stations in Combo South do not have a road water vehicle that they can do in their patrols. And as I said, some of the women will be leaving their houses by 3.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock 
trying to go to Serekunda, trying to go to Brikama, and some of them are even coming uh, to, 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 to further places. So all these things, the security need to be looked into, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, when it comes to my favorite, as I said, Ministry of Fisheries, though it's been said that uh, the fishing agreement with the Senegalese government is going to come back to the National Assembly to be reviewed, but a lot need to be done for the fishing communities, especially our young people and those who are involved in, cities, in, in fishing activities. The activities, the, the, as been said by the minister when he was here last year, that they have signed a partnership with FAO and also the Japanese. But the status of implementation and the provision of fishing gears and the training of young people is something that is lacking and it is demotivating the young people. And I think that statistical data needs to be available to give us those who are trained, where were they trained, where, which location did they come from, and how long was the training, what was provided to them, so that it will be easy for the community responsible of environment, fisheries and water resources, will do their monitoring and be able to follow up onto submissions that was made into the country. Honorable Speaker, land and regional governance comes back again to Combo South. The President has instituted commission, a land commission. Three years down the line, nothing has been done. And the composition of that land commission does not meet the needs of the very people who are in the center of these land problems in, in, in the Gambia. There is nobody in that land commission who comes from Combo South, or who comes from Combo Central, or who comes from San Mentring, or who comes from Busumbala, or all Yundum. So all those people who are there are, are people who do not have the background information on land tenorship and management in this country. So it is important that when we are constitution commissioned, we have people who have the expertise to be able to share their experiences and listen to the people and bring our reports that will help the people to move the agenda forward. Honorable Speaker, as I said, three years down the line, we don't know what that land commission is doing and no report is coming. You go to all the tribunals, uh, the chief tribunals in, in West Coast region. All the major cases that are there is the problem of land between the state, I mean the land agents and also individuals, and those are issues that we need to do. So I think there is a need to look at the composition and the reconstitution of the land commission, honorable speaker, so that the people's land can be done. And as I said, at the moment, there is a big problem in Gunju, and the Minister of uh, Strategic Research is, is, is in the center of that. He was the general manager of the Gambia Teachers Union. They bought a piece of land for the teachers in Gunju. Five years down the land, all the payments are done. Over five million dollars went to that. A small boy, less than 30 years, who do not even originate from Combo South, is claiming ownership over that land, Honorable Speaker. And I think this is something that the regional minister and his permanent secretary and his team, physical planning inclusive, need to go back to the drawing board and look at those issues. Honorable Speaker, the Gambia have a land tenure system. Gunjur was built in the 18th century. Berending was just came as a village that sprung up from Gunjur in 1921. So how can a 35-year boy claim that he has ownership over 500 hectares of land that does not belong to him? And his ancestors were not even from the Congo. They just come from Kiang's West. So these are some of the issues that we have to. And there are court cases that have given the right ownership to these families in the communities that the land belongs to them. They have done tribunal cases. They have gone to the high court. And all those things have given land to these people. And that very boy is the one who killed Buba Jame in Gunjur. And now he has conducted from the prison. The Minister of Interior told us that they are going to investigate that. I raised that question here, and they said the court is in the case in the court. They just opened the date, gate for him, broad daylight, and the boy escaped 20, on the 27th of December 2020. He is nowhere to be seen. So, Honorable Speaker, I think those are areas that we need to look into. Honorable Speaker, education is the key to development, and we need to be able to be serious with education. Our university is the highest institution for education in this country. We need to resource that institution. We need to give them the capacity to be able 
to be the eyes and ears of this country. Without a proper university, we are not going to move. The university, and I want to also thank the former Minister of Higher Education, that he has done and expanded the operations of the university, that MDI and GTTI are going to be uh, the university of their own, and they'll be doing. But what is needed now, Honorable Speaker, the structures, when they are put there, let us invent, let us, I mean, let us put more resources into the university so that it can be the bedrock of all our development programs. And I think the university is, is neglected. We need to use the expertise of the university for all our work that we are going to do in all our departments and agencies. And I want to commend the UNDP for taking the lead in partnering with institutions, all the local councils, and even this National Assembly. At the moment, we have over 30 young people from the university who are here as interns working towards and helping the, the parliamentarians in their research work, in their, in their oversight functions, and also be able to link them with other institutions and through some research. So I think the Ministry of, Base, of the Higher Education has to be helped so that when the new buildings are done, they, we, we resource them. The capacity is there. Let us stop talking that we do not have the capacity. The capacity is in the country. How do we manage that capacity and bring, bring the people that matters into the center and bring them to be responsible of the decision-making processes that can help us to do? And talking about the institutions, I have to go back to the RDI, Rural Development Institute, which is under the Ministry of Local Government. There again, Honorable Speaker. All the major development workers of this country who had served the Department of Community Development as directors, most of them are working in the international arena as consultants, as experts, as advisors to com communities, countries in the Caribbean, in Asia, as development programs. And we have them in the country here. All the former Four directors of community development are in country. I don't want to name names. Those of you who have been in this country from 1979 to 1990, you know who they are. They were in the center of the decentralization process. We need to tap their expertise to revive that institute. Community development work is very key. It's the entry point for any development. And that's why all the community development assistants in the regions are assigned to be the Secretary General of the Tax in all our regions because of their knowledge in community development. So that institute is dying down, nothing is happening, the young people are frustrated, the, the curricula is very excellent. I have been to Pedwa and it's almost the same curricula that I spent six months in Pedwa. It's almost the same thing that they are doing. So that institution, when it is revived, the young people will not even have the cost to travel to Pedwa in, in, in Buya, Buya town, in, now it's called a city in, 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 in Cameroon. So I think it is important that more resources is given to those things. And they are following some of the projects that are working in the country to give them funds to reform, the, to revive those things so that the institutions can use that place for the training of their project staff and ensuring that they reach out to the communities. Honorable Speaker, Department of Strategic uh, Policy, as I said, Honorable Speaker, some of the things that they are doing, how do we bring them together, not to have duplication in our agencies? Because they are doing almost the same work with community development, with water resources, and also now as the main supplier of water. So what do we do? And the, 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 the bill that is going to be, that the plans, there are plans to have a bill that will come to have at the a water agency that will have to coordinate all the, all the supplies of water in this thing. But how do we do? How, what do we do to have the strategies so, do, so that we have the synergy and the linkages to be able to put all these things and the coordination that is needed so that it's more coordinated at the level of the communities and also the beneficiaries are more trained to be able to do these things. Honorable Speaker, finally, uh, I want to go to the, minister, the Ministry of Gender. The National Assembly has uh, ratified the, 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 the bill that uh, Enterprise Development Fund. You know, as I said, the statistics is not coming. $17 million is given. Who were the beneficiaries? 
what is the disaggregation of data per region? We need to know who are those who benefited from that 17 million. How are they, how are they the, the monies are disbursed? What are the following things? And all the criteria are set in that, in that act now, because it is an act. This is already running and functional. So because the budget session is coming, we need to know those details when they come again so that we can say, yes, it's important we increase it to twofold because they are reaching out to the most vulnerable members of our community. And that is something that we need to do. Finally, mm -hmm. Honorable Speaker, I want to say that uh, there are happenings in this country, and I think it is about time that we speak about it. There are a lot of rumors of corruption going on in this country. Corruption is a killer, and it is happening, and people are saying, we need to come out and be bold enough to say, yes, it's happening. Who are the people who are in it, and what do we do? Honorable Speaker, I have seen in the newspapers not quite long ago that uh, there was corruption at our main judiciary. I, 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 I get shocked. And they are not talking about hundreds of thousands, millions. So a million now is, so that's why the boys in the street, they are saying, that million million is nothing now, because they are giving billions free to people. So talk, talk about million is nothing. Honorable Speaker, I think these are very serious issues, and I think there is need for us to do it. The GPA thing saga is going, I think it's with the committee here, GNPC, Honorable Speaker, the airport. Honorable Speaker, point of order. I am not giving him the chance. These are issues. Yeah. Yes, yes. Hon uh, honorable member, may we hear the point of order? Yes, I'm here, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, standing order 29, subsection 1, or close 1, every member shall restrict his or her observation to the subject on the discussion. The subject on the discussion today, Honorable Speaker, is about the state of nation address by the president. What the honorable member is trying to put across here today is extraneous to the issue. Thank you. Thank you thank very much, honorable speaker. Thank you, honorable member. There's a point of order. There has to be ruling. Thank you very much, honorable member. The president address is cross-cutting. It touches on every aspect. Of, of, of development in this country. So, honorable member, we will, we will ask the honorable member to continue. Honorable speaker, I think the, the member was sleeping when the president himself was mentioning corruption in these chambers here. And all what I am saying are areas that have been dealt with with the president. The judiciary, he talked about it, you know, localizing and Gambianizing our judiciary. If there is a rumor that there is corruption in that sector, we need to talk about it. GPTC is, is a government agency, it's, we need to talk about it. And then the airport fee, the $20 that it been collected by passengers, is also in the newspaper. So those are headline things that have happened. Honorable Minister, the, uh, Honorable Speaker, the final thing, I think the Minister of Youth and Sports should resign. He had defrauded the country of over 3,000 euros giving it to a wife who is not a member of a delegation and is a non-resident of the Republic of the Gambia, taxpayers' money, 170,000 dollars. So I think he should be ethically come forward and resign if the president or the executive do not want to sanction him. Honorable Speaker, I take my seat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Combo South. Honorable members, certain concerns affect parliament and they are noted. The president's address to the nation is cross-cutting and affects all sectors of government. If the vice president avails himself to come, out, come to listen to it and to step in for the president, I think various sectoral heads like ministers should also endeavor to be here to listen and then and then, and then help give out these deliberations. This will be noted, and that we will endeavor henceforth to ensure that uh, uh, as much as possible, cabinet ministers do come 
to join the vice president uh, during the during the uh, debate on the, uh, the president's address. Uh, honorable members, now I now have the honorable member for Jokadu to take the floor. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable speaker, let me first of all thank His Excellency the President of the Republic, Mr. Adam Obaro, for fulfilling his constitutional requirement to come to these chambers and then address the entire nation on his programs, policies, and development agendas. Honorable Speaker, to start my deliberation, I know I will not be able to touch on all the areas, but I'll just summarize. What I want to say is, His Excellency the President has done his mandate to come here and address us. But all what he delivered on here was not written by His Excellency the President, but it was written by various ministries and agencies, and then it was compiled and given to him, for him to come and address us. So I think it's going to be better for those ministers to be here when we are deliberating on this very important debate. I concur with the former uh, speaker. Honorable Speaker, the problem of this country did not start now. It started long time ago. The Englishman said, when you tumble on a rock and then you felt meters away, when you get up, don't look at where you felt, but you have to look back at the rock where you tumbled from. So this, the problem of this nation started from since the First Republic to the second and then to the present generation. So all the aspirations and needs of this country for the past 50 something years cannot be realized overnight. It has to take time. And we all have to accept that. There are things that are moving. We don't say that everything is moving, but there are some that are moving. And then the rest that is not moving, this is not a blame game. We cannot just blame an individual for any wrong doing in this country. Anything good in this country, all of us are part of it, in one way or the other. But anything that also goes wrong in this country, we should also make sure to accept that we are all part of it. We cannot point fingers to an individual and then self ourselves. It will never work that way. So the thing that I want to say is we all have to put hands together collectively, put our hearts together and then see how best we will build this country out. Honorable Speaker, the present government in all aspects of development, they are at least trying. When it comes to road infrastructure, they built so many roads in this country recently. When it comes to education, the same things. They are building schools, structures, building quarters for staffs. Electricity, though the rural electrification is still pending, but at least they are going bit by bit. When it comes to the health sector, the same thing. In my area, Jokadu, since independent, we were having only one health center in Kuntaya. The interior, they were finding it very difficult for them to come out and go to Kuntaya to get their medical services. But now, thank God, in the interior there, in a place called Kisemajau, 
They are building a health facility there, which is at the verge of completion. So that, that's a commendation for this, for this government. Honorable Speaker, agriculture. The previous speakers have said it here. The problem of this country is people will be given positions to rescue this country, and then they'll just fill those positions for their own personal gain without having the interest of this nation. That is the problem of this country. Agriculture, last year, the tons of fertilizer that was brought to this country would have been here still now if it was put into good use. But the fertilizer was just scattered. People were just taking this fertilizer overnight. Not even in the country, transporting it to other uh, regions. Which, which, which is not very good, definitely. Because all the corruption and all the bad deeds that we are saying here, it is not done by foreigners, but we, the Gambians, are doing it. Then who are we going to blame? We blame ourselves. Honorable Speaker, the Honorable, uh, the Mr. President has done his quarter to come and address us. Now, it is left to the executive, the technicians, to take their work seriously. Because when they were been given these jobs, they all swear to the religion that they believe that they are going to serve this country, that they will never fail this country. But that is not happening. So I want us to go back to the drawing board. We know that this Gambia is ours. No one is coming here, will never come here to develop this country for us. We, the Gambians, should take the bull by the horn and then we try to develop this country. All the things that we miss, we start now to, to, to be able to be fixing them one after the other. Then in the long run, we will see a Gambia that we all yearn for, a Gambia that is fit for purpose, and a Gambia where our children and grandchildren will be proud of. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Jokadu. We now have the Honorable Member for Lower Fladu West. Thank you very much, Speaker, for giving me time. Uh, well, I thank the President for addressing the nation on that fateful day. Uh, when I go through this speech, I feel at, point in, at certain point in time, the president was well not, is not informed properly from the line ministry. And this drew my attention to my constituency, Lower Flood West. We believe we hold the food basket of this country. And uh, in agriculture, almost all eight projects are centered around that area. But still now, we're not getting the benefit of those projects. Looking at the Jackali Pacha, the president have not go in detail the issue of revitalizing Jackali Pacha. And Jackali Pacha currently is at a very bad shape. The land needs survey, the water canals are not working, and there is no farm mechanization. The women and the farmers there use the hard way. There is a lot of harvest lost. But yes, still, the government is yet to ad address that. And that is of big concern to the people of Lower Flood. And also, coming, we are still disadvantaged with the issue of water. Few villages in Lower Flood do have access to clean and safe drinking water. And then this is our concern. And then the rural uh, uh, water and the rural electrification program haven't touched us in the manner that we wanted. Uh, going back to health, it does not touch the issue of drugs supplies in that world. And in this country, currently, wherever you go, you, in an end government facility, say there is no drugs or equipments are not. 
and I think this is a concern. And I, before I forget, Mr. Speaker, on the day of this fateful day, the convoy of the Vice President disrespect parliamentarian, and that was very wrong. They disrespected us, obstructed the traffic of parliamentary, going for parliamentary sittings, to the extent that they even confiscated uh, uh, a key. And we believe that those parliamentary concerns need an apology from the convoy of the Vice President. Look, parliamentarians need to be respected. We need to be respected before I pass. And one thing for certain in this country that we have to face the reality. For the fact that we belong from different political view, but let's see this country. This is a country that you can see another opponent a political party will wish this country to go down. This should not be accepted. We should have an attitudinal change. We should completely reframe in the one that we look at things. Alama Banco have been said somewhere else, which is wrong. This country belongs to all of us. Let's face the reality. We can have different political view, but not to the extent that we are going. And this also reflects to the journalism that the president did not touch well. You see, journalism should be a profession. And I believe that there should be ethic and code of conduct that should safeguard journalists in this country. I believe in law of law do that. They used to tell me, Honorable Mbalo, bear in mind that the journalists are going to set this country in fire for one day. For the kind of information, everybody become a journalist and there is no code of conduct that safeguards this thing. And I believe that the country needs to be serious in this matter. Coming back to road network, the ministry, lower flood west, we had port road networks to the extent that most of the people are at disadvantage. And I believe that the president of the nation should understand this very well if he is informed. If you look at the road network that links communities from Sarengai to Fulabantan and from Saremalan to the highway that is into Alaji, those road networks are very poor. If a pregnant woman is about to go to, to labor, sometimes they deliver on the hostel. But we thank the president for initiating the community ambulance. And to, we believe that that was one of the biggest success stories that the health ministry has registered in my area. Going back to the issue of tourism, when I saw the speech, I see two paragraphs. It's very small for the Ministry of Tourism. And I cannot understand that. We need more information at that area too, because we know tourism contributes greatly to the economy of this country. And we know at which length that the COVID-19 affected tourism. But then that two, those two few paragraphs was not sufficient for the August gathering for the president to tell us this. We expect far more than that. And I believe that next time, what we expect as parliamentarian, the president will look at the success stories that happened from the ministry. We look at the burning issue that are currently happening in the nations, and what plans do they have to mitigate those challenges? But if the speech is coming like this, sometimes it's repeated over and over. And I believe that that notion should go, because we need to move ahead. We need to face the challenges. And it's unaccepted that the number of people dying and in the Ministry of uh, Interior did have not featured there. The crime rate, the accident, a lot of issues are happening in this country. But in this speech, we have not seen that much. And we are concerned. We don't want our people to be dying like that. What policy would come? Because I don't expect somebody to kill somebody. Only he could be do is to be hospitalized in a prison, giving everything. That's not. Let them feel the pain of doing the wrong. And I thank everybody. I rest my case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, honorable member for Lower Flood West. I now invite the Honorable Member for Kiang West. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of this August Assembly, Mr. Vice President, Ministers here present, Uh, first, may I start with thanking the President for fulfilling this important constitutional requirement to address the National Assembly, the most democratic institution in any democratic nation, 
on the policies and programs of the government. This was, this was a great job. And I want to tell the President, thank you very much for that. Uh, having been heard from the President and gone through the document that has been presented by the President. But first, before I proceed with the deliberation, I would love to defy a little bit with uh, what the member for Combo South has said during his deliberation, the comparison between the inhabitants of Combo South and that of the LRR, which I'm, I am a citizen of. And uh, looking at national benefits, national entitlement, if you want to talk about the distributive justice, you talk about equity for every individual to get what you supposed to, what is due to you. So the principles of equity would help us very well to better understand why the comparison between the LRR and that of uh, uh, Combo South. So therefore, I believe, even if it is a single community in LRR or two communities inhabited by 2,000 people, they are all citizens, taxpayers of the country, they have equal rights. So therefore, it would have been better fitting if Combo South should be given what is due to them this would take us to the principle of equity. So thank you very much. I proceed with my deliberation. Uh, I want to start my observation with, uh, with the Ministry of Health. Honorable Speaker, uh, it was so uh, crazy, honestly, during the President's deliberation and by facts by the fact, which is on the document that he has presented, that the major achievement of the administration of the health sector, the major achievement is the introduction of the health insurance scheme, which is in progress. The health insurance scheme with the registration is in progress. The day that the president was delivering his speech to address the parliament, if you, walk, if you walk out of this parliament, 1.2 kilometers to the major health center in this country, there was no water. These are facts. The premature kids died at the health center in those very days. There was no water. Women were giving birth. It was difficult to have a water to sanitize them. So I think the Department of Health should come back to this parliament and report to us about what are some of the achievements, what are some of the things that they've done with the budget that has been allocated to them. Go ahead, taking you through a few history about the budget. Prior to 2021, the arrival of COVID-19, the fifth legislature sat over a discussion to talk about the fund that the health department could be allocated with for their response to COVID-19. It was 500 million initially. That 500 million was used during the implementation of this budget. The same Minister of Health came to the fifth, during the fifth, fifth legislature, came to the parliament to report about the corruption scandal in his very own ministry. These issues are on records. What has been done about that? After the corruption scandal, a supplementary budget has been approved for that ministry after the exhaustion of the 500 million without going through the National Assembly. The same ministry, Minister of Health and Social Welfare, we had an approved budget for them in 2021 which was 1 billion 602 million 622 point, point of correction. what? Is it observation? Is yes. it an observation? Yes. Wait, when your turn comes in, honorable member, please. Point, Allow me to deliberate. Is it an order? Of, point of order. All right, thank you. Yes, point of order, please. May we hear it? 
And the speaker, the member is saying that that was a supplementary that was uh, done for the health without coming to the parliament. That is an error. That it was wasn't. not supplementary done. Supplementary budgeting cannot be done without coming to this parliament. I, may I hear you again, honorable member? It, it, no, it's not. Honorable member, may I hear you it's again? It's not the slip. I said the honorable member has said that uh, a supplementary budget was done for the health which has not come to this parliament. I was in this parliament. So I know if that was a supplementary without coming here, I would know. So I said that was an error. Okay. Meaning the honorable member is in informing people. Honorable member for Willie West. Honorable These were member. facts, and we have records for this. We have videos. Honorable we member. This man is... This is Yes, member for Central Badibu. Yes, thank you, Honorable Speaker. It seems the Honorable Member is insisting that this is a fact, that we cannot accept that in this parliament, because it never came, uh, uh, it came through this parliament. All the sub, sub, uh, supplementary budget passed here. If he is now saying that it, it was passed and did not pass through this parliament, we say no to that. And he cannot continue saying that. <laughs> Hold on that. I have told him, take, take note of the comment that it was misleading and that you can continue, please. Honorable Speaker and all other honorable members who made an observation and uh, uh, the matter came to the National Assembly after the approval. The matter came to the National Assembly after the approval of the budget. The National Assembly sat over it to, 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 to talk to the ministry that it should have come to the National Assembly before the approval of the budget. This was what happened, and we have the records of this, and we have videos National Assembly deliberating over a matter that has been done Can I observe, please? without following the right protocols. Can I observe you, please? Let me continue my deliberation. And uh, the same health ministry, uh, I was trying to give and highlight on the allocation that goes to Minister of Health and looking at the health condition in the country today. I said in 2021, the approved budget was 1 billion 602 million 626 thousand. The same ministry, the approved in 2022, is 2, is 2 billion 125 million 600 and 637,942 Gambian dollars is GMD. And a budget was revised for this particular ministry in 2022. And in that revised budget, it was captured 2 billion 269 million 724,000 617 Gambian dollars, with a difference after the revised of the budget. When we have moved more than half a year, after the revised budget, this same ministry has been, the difference between the approved and the revised gave us an amount of 144 million, it is 6,000 dollars, 675 Dialysis. These are the funds that are going to the health sector in this country. Billions, billions, and billions. Looking at the health sector across the length and breadth of the country. And of course, excuse me if I should talk about the West Kiang. It's not been uh, uh, sentimental a little bit. This is a constituency that I represent, of course. The only major health center is Karantab Health Center. There was no better road for the two republics that has passed. They have only one major health center, which is Karantab Health Center, which has a satellite communities of more than 10. Today, when a woman delivered in that hospital, you struggle to have a water to sanitize the individual. 
There was an electricity project in Kiang, down from Sankandi to Kia West. Electricity in Kia West without Kiang current, but where our major health center is, there's no electricity in our constituency. This is where we need the electricity for people in the remote areas can be able to access a proper health, health care. I'm making this submission to the Minister of Energy down to Nawek to ensure that this health center have an electricity. They have supplied them with a major generator and later will draw it back. Electricity in Kervis without current number means there is no electricity in our constituency. My community is Kenneba and the electric com electricity comes and stops there. There is an MRC, which is a medical research institution. The institution doesn't belong to this country. If the government of the Gambia can bring an electricity in a particular region and stop at a health center, the institution that doesn't belong to the government, and leave, the, and leave your own child that you've given birth, that you've given birth to, this doesn't tell well. So I believe in the health sector of Care West. I think definitely the minister needs to look into this to ensure that we have an improved health facility in Care West and throughout the country at large. Honorable Speaker, I want to proceed with the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education. Uh, I shouldn't have posed the question, but should I? Is it safe to leave the country in the hands of the children who are going to school today? Is the Gambia going to be safe? Looking at the mass failure from the students graduating from the senior secondary schools? And the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education is struggling to have been built more than 100 schools across the rent and breadth of the country. And the kids are coming out of schools with mass failures. The children who should sit here as parliament members, as the Speaker of the House, as presidents, as ministers and directors of different directorates, are feeling woefully like this. The future of this country is at stake. And of course, in this process, I believe, during the president's deliberation, under the health, under basic and secondary education, there was a point where the, uh, they've highlighted that the number of passes among female students in 2019, the number of passes among female students in 2019 was 2,797 female students passed and got five credits and above. And by 2020, it was 2,882. The difference is 85 which is a classroom in Muslim high school. If you get to Muslim high school, you have more than 90 students in a classroom. If it, within a range, the minister can tell us that the achievement that they have registered in female student passing is 85. That is so, that's so bad to tell us that. That's a single class in certain schools. So I think we are all responsible and we should all be part of the process. Parents, the policy makers, the National Assembly, Corporal punishment is disbanded. Of course, there shouldn't be any corporal punishment. But there has to be mechanisms in which students could be punished and to make sure that they concentrate on education and parents take their positions, teachers take their positions, the institutions take their positions, the authorities at school level take their positions so that the future of this country can be brighter. Otherwise, our future is at stake. In the same education department, you get to Gambia College. In the Second Republic, students were not paying Gambia College. Stipends were given to students. Dormitories were sanitized very well. Students are paying Gambia College. And if the department is telling us today that the government has recruited, recruited over 1,000 students from Gambia College, where are they going? If I pay my school fees at the end of the day, I go to school where I want to go to. Previously, what was happening is, if government pays for students, at the end of the day, when they graduate, you post them to various schools. But this is why the students from Gambia College now are running to private schools. 
because that's where they are better paid and they pay their money. It's not the government who pays to the schools for them. So I think Gambia government should be, Gambia college should be looked at very well. If we want a proper education for our country, kids can only have a proper education when their teachers have gone through a very rigorous training, a very proper training in which they can have a, a conducive a, and a, a very welcoming learning environment. Without that, we are going to fail woefully and students are going to fail continuously because the Gambia College is not being looked at very well. Looking at that, University of the Gambia, during President's deliberation, it has been highlighted that 70% of the civil work at the new university structure at Faraba Banta is completed. And it was built from, from, from grants and loans from taxpayers' monies. Taxpayers, the peasants, the poor people, the marginalized, their kids are graduating from senior secondary schools with good grades, and they are dropping out from schools because they don't have scholarship to go to school. And the money that we've taken as loan, they are the people who are going to pay these loans. So I think the ministry should strategize and stop giving scholarships to the sons and daughters of the ministers and parliamentarians and directors and give it to the, the, the sons and daughters of the peasants, the poor people, the marginalized, so that they can all have an opportunity to sit here as parliamentarians. So I think these are issues that we are confronted with in the education sector and it's better we realize these things and go back to the drawing board and see how we help the peasants and the marginalized in our societies in order for us to have a better society. And, and of course, we have talked about a lot, but economic finance and economic affairs is the most important aspect. Which I didn't see, or which I don't see in the report on the finance and economic affairs is to talk to Gambian people, to inform the National Assembly about the GDP that takes you down to per capita income of an individual in a country. This will inform the citizens to clearly identify the distributive justice how each and every citizen is entitled to and how much you are entitled to. So that the member of KWS can sit here and say if the per capita income is $3,000, then the people of KWS is, is constituted this number of population. Then this is the per capita income that can go to KWS. This can renovate current of a health center. They can help construct KWS road. We, we want such statistics to come in. We want such information to come in to inform the people about the economy of the country. What is the GDP of the Gambia? What is per capita income? What I'm going to have, what my son is going to have, what my daughter, what my mother, what my grandpa in Uli, what my grandpa in Fonyi is going to have. These are important information that the National Assembly need to have so that we can understand the economy of the country. Looking at the same point, that takes you down to the debt service of this country, which is very high. It has been informed in the document that the debt service in this country is a, looking at the debt service, 5.01 billion is external debt. One point 5.01 billion of this GMD, that's what we have as a debt. 1.9 billion, billion was an external debt service. And we have 3.1 billion as domestic debt service. Our debt is going higher and higher and higher. This is why the economists are giving a statistic that even the children or the generation yet unborn in the Gambia are on debt or they are indebted. Is it that our ministry is valuing the total resources of the Gambia and borrowing from outside? And now when we defaulted, when they come, they're going to take us, including this National Assembly and all of us. So I think we need to look at serious economic matters, serious economic issues to ensure that Gambia graduates from borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and borrowing and we continue to borrow. 
Of course, the tax cannot raise your economy. The tax cannot raise revenue for you. For you, if you kill the economy, the taxes are high for the investors. If you look at the levy that is going around on the importers today, it's very high. This is why we began at some point with a CSO responsible for this, uh, with, with, with a state-owned enterprise responsible for this department to ensure that some of the internal levies that is causing this escalating price of foodstuffs and commodities that are, need, that are needed by the citizens of this country to be, to be cancelled, to ensure that we have a very, very better living in this country. So I think if we kill the economy, we, tax cannot raise revenue for this country. So it's better we allow the investors to come to this country. We see how best we negotiate with them. This will improve the employment status of this country. The young people who are idle in the streets, this is allowing and this is encouraging the criminologists that are happening. People are escaping from rape to rape. People's houses have been intruded. Nobody knows what's happening. It's the increase of the unemployment rate. The children will continue to hunger. They will starve forever. And our tax will never be enough for us. Honorable Speaker, now to defense and security. I think it was uh, so disappointing that the state of nation address could be heard from the president. The president read, of course, I know the draft came from the ministry. Without talking about the presence of the foreign forces in this country. What are we doing about that? We have the presence of the foreign forces in the country. Are we, st are we still on a war? Of course, if there is a need and it is a security advice that there should be in this country, that has to be known. What are the rationale behind their presence in this country? At some point, very first time since I was born, I had that security personnel, the custodians of the law, trample on six youth, six Gambian youths on Mar at Maria Makunda Johnson. And they died mysteriously. These were economic forces. Let there be mechanisms in which we have a proper security sector reform to ensure that our people are inclusive and let it be participatory. Investors are feared to come to the country. Anybody who does economy knows this. Investors are feared to come because there is a presence of a foreign investor, a foreign forces here, because they believe the country is not still stable. We are lacking a lot. So I think we need to look at the security sector and definitely inform the Gambian people what mechanism are we doing to ensure that we bring back our men and women in uniform. If they need to be equipped and go to school, let, them, let us take them to school. Let them learn. Let them learn the proper skills. Let them go through the proper trends to ensure that our country is in our hands. Our president is protected by a foreign security today. We should all endeavor to ensure that our, our president is protected by ourselves. Is this helping us in the security of the national information? Do we really know? So I think deliberating on the issue of defense and security without talking about the presence of the foreign forces in this country and why are they still present in the country and what mechanism is the government doing to ensure that we have a proper security reform to ensure that our country is in our own hands. Talking about the same security, at some time ago it was so disheartening that a young girl, a student of St. Peter's, who has been killed, her womanhood was cut off. And another man was also found hanged. Nobody knows who has who have done this. By today, there should be a march for that student to ensure that you know they call for government to make a stop to those things. A young girl was raped, five-year-old girl, and, 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 and died a few days ago. What is the security of this country doing? So I believe the time has come that we all join together and help each other to develop this country. It's not only the president. It's a collective responsibility. Of course, I will conclude by talking to the National Assembly members. We have an oversight function, of course, you all know. 
that we are performing over uh, government agencies, uh, uh, state-owned enterprises? Are we meeting our own obligations as custodians of the law? As long as we want to hold others to account, let's start to meet our own obligations. Committee sessions will be on, and members will come and sign and go home. It happens in this National Assembly. Let's, we need to have an attitudinal change. Not only the president that can develop this country and take it forward. Some will come before the session ends and go. Some will come at the tail end of the session. If everybody does that, where are we going as a nation? Of course, we need a leadership that is responsible and responsive, but we should all try to endeavor we meet our obligations as citizens of this country. So it starts from us as National Assembly members. Honorable Speaker, I submit. Thank you very much, Honorable Member for Kian West. You've posed all of us a challenge. And the statement you gave out, various committee chairpersons and committee members are around. I'm not aware that that those statement is correct, as you said it, but if it is so, I think honorable members, especially chairpersons of committees, must endeavor to ensure that those ones don't come up during our committee sessions. Honorable, I now invite the honorable member for Upper Fuladu West. Um, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And then I thank my um, honorable colleague, National Assembly members, and also thanking the Vice President and then the other ministers present here. Um, first of all, I think I would like to thank His Excellency, the President, uh, Adam Abaro, for fulfilling his um, constitutional requirement uh, when he appeared before this August Assembly um, to address the Assembly and also the nation on his government programs and policies. I think I have to thank the President uh, for that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want the general body to understand one thing. When I said the general body, I'm talking about the entire Gambia. I know people in the Gambia and outside Gambia might be watching me. And then we all have a responsibility role to play. Because remember, we, if we call ourselves as Muslims and Christians, and then one day we will die and dead is described as the call of river noon. It will happen one day. So before you die, if you are given responsibilities, you have to walk according to that responsibility. And just like I, as my fellow honorable member said, uh, before he took his seat, uh, honorable, uh, the honorable member for Kian West, he said um, it should be a collective responsibility for all Gambians to see that this country is moving forward. And then Gambians should understand one thing, when we succeed, we all succeed. But if the country fails, not President Barrow who fails, it's the entire country who fails. President Barrow is just one out of the lot. We have almost three million Gambians. The president cannot be the president at the same time being a minister or national assembly member or police officer. So the president is just a president. If you are assigned, you're given the responsibility role to play I am urging on all, every Gambians, please, let us put our political differences aside. We see Gambia, because Gambia is better than all of us, and then Gambia is bigger than all of us. Today we are here. Yesterday, others were here before us. And then, whether we like it or not, our time will come to an end. The most important person on earth died, that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we will all die. So before our time comes, let us try to strive hard and then walk to see to it that this country is developed. Like Mr. Speaker, as a new time comer in the assembly, as a new member, uh, the speech that the president uh, made um, last week, I think um, I have to elaborate on some of the areas. 
but might be, uh, it will be very difficult for me to elaborate on all the areas. Just as I said, as a, uh, as a newcomer in parliament, but notwithstanding on health, if you look at health, what the president has highlighted is like um, during the last years, uh, that is his government uh, have successfully expanded and developed healthcare services within the country. I think we can all um, be a witness in terms of infrastructures. They have built a lot of health facilities within the country. And then Gambian should understand one thing. Man wants are unlimited. As Lion Rabin said, and economics, he said, man wants are unlimited. You want two. If you get two, you want three. If you get three, you want five. If you get five, you want 100. So that's the world. And then people should understand the government of the Gambia cannot provide everything for her citizens. It's practical impossible. Even the most powerful nation, America. If you go to US, citizens are complaining. If you go to Europe, citizens are complaining. So if citizens complain in this country, well, to me, it's normal. But what is important, we should all work hard. We should all strive hard. We stop the blame game. Because as National Assembly members, you have rule to play. That rule is you have to speak the truth. If you speak the truth, you will help the leadership. If you speak the truth, you will help those in position. Like, as I said, government major achievement in health, as far as I am concerned, is the introduction of the National Health Insurance Scheme. That National Health Insurance Scheme is to benefit the poor and the vulnerable. So I think this one is very, very important as far as the health services is concerned. But another successful story is, that is why uh, one of my honorable um, colleagues mentioned statistics. Statistics are very, very important. Because sometimes when you bring in statistics so that Gambians can know where we are heading to. Because if sometimes outside, others will be saying, you will see it on newspapers. People will be saying at radios that the, the, uh, the maternal and child mortality rate is high in the Gambia. That is, that is incorrect. That is incorrect. They don't know the data. The maternal and child mortality rate is going down as far as the country is concerned. If you go to the Ministry of Health, you will see the statistics there. You will see the data. And then skilled birth attendance. Skilled birth attendance. And also postnatal care. And nutrition has drastically improved in this country. So these are the data. These are the statistics. So I think the Ministry of Health, um, to me, they are really trying. But as I said, months once are unlimited. We, the Ministry of Health have a lot of challenges as far as health is concerned. That one, we all know. And on training, the sector now offers, like postgraduate um, training at Edward Francis Small Teaching Hospital. They are giving that training also. Offers uh, health-related programs up to bachelor levels. So these are all achievements under the Ministry of, uh, of Health. And also, another successful story, as far as the Ministry of Health is concerned, is the introduction of the community ambulance. My others, they may see it as politically, or they may see it as otherwise. But to me, where I come from, Upper Fladu, the people of Upper Fladu, we are really enjoying the community ambulance. I think we have to thank the government of the Gambia for giving us those community ambulances. And 80 new ambulances have been distributed countrywide. So I think we have to give the Minister of Health a tap on their back and the government of the Gambia for providing those community ambulances to areas where health facilities are not. And then the sector is also constructing an emergency treatment center and also blood transfusion center at Farato. So all these are success stories as far as health is concerned. But notwithstanding, I am also urging on the Ministry of Health, the minister, that I am from Overfladu, I am from Bansang, and Bansang is the main referral hospital in Upper Fuladu or in CRR. Referrals are coming from Basse, from CRR, and part of Senegal Oriental. 
But as we speak, Bansan Hospital, we were promised that the hospital will have a dialysis machine, but up to now we don't have. And definitely we need this dialysis machine. Because the minister, he knows the importance of the dialysis machine. As you all know now, many of our adults and children are dying as a result of kidney problem. So we definitely need the dialysis machine at Bansan Hospital. And also, we don't have an orthopedic surgeon. All surgical cases are referred to Edward Francis Small Chicken Hospital. And then we are putting more burden on them. So I am urging on the minister to look into that. At the Bansan Hospital, we need a surgeon. We don't have a surgeon. And the hospital is running an ICU unit, but it's not up to standard. It's not up to standard because Bansan Hospital is a major hospital. On daily basis, you can see more than 1,000 patients, especially today, Monday. Over 1,500 patients will be seen today, Monday. So I want the minister uh, to step in and the government of the Gambia so that at least that area um, can also be um, sorted out. Uh, Mr. Honorable Speaker, uh, on agriculture, like as my Honorable colleague said, that we are the food basket that is the Sierra South. We are the food basket of, of, of the Gambia. The land is there. The water is there. Uh, but like, like, as I said, like in Bansam, for example, the the, the, the rice field, this is going to be the second year that women farmers, they could not cultivate rice. They could not do rice cultivation. So there was a project, that project started since last year, or, or since the year before last, but the project has stopped and no work has been done. So I want the agriculture minister um, to look into that aspect. And also, as you said, the. The agriculture, minister, um, the agriculture, they have eight projects, and these eight projects is amounting to about $294.13 uh, million. So this is also, how to call it, um, a success story. Through the help of uh, partner support and government. And government have invested heavily in agriculture, mechanized so as to transform the sector through donor funded project. Last year, over 6,000 hectares of land was used for rice cultivation. And then 400 hectares of land was used for vegetable cultivation. So this shows you that um, the way things are unfolding as far as the sector is concerned. Like when we go to security, when we talk about security, um, like as one of my, my colleagues also mentioned that um, I want the, minist the Ministry of Interior to look into the security matters of this country. Because as I speak, uh, the National Assembly member for Upper Fuladu West, there was a time I sponsored a football tournament. In my constituencies, I have four wars, uh, in which presently I have suspended all footballing activities on, in Upper Fuladu, simply because a boy stabbed his colleague with a scissor and he eventually died. So the crime rate is on alarm. So the interior minister, I definitely want the ministry to look into that affairs, that people are just killing one another on daily basis without, without reasons. So these are things that I want the ministry to look into. And secondly also, the Ministry of Interior at Bansam Police Station, there is something that is, um, we have about 19 barrels of of petrol parked at the Bansang police station, 19 barrels. Up to now, it's about five years those barrels have been parked at the police station. Almost five years now. And then, these are inflammable materials. So may God forbid, if those things inflame, the whole police station will be burned down. So, and then the police, uh, the police commissioner, Sankara in the area, have reported the matter to Banjul, to the High Command, but still, nothing has been done. So I am urging on the Minister, Minister of Interior to look into that area. Otherwise, things may get out of hand. And thirdly, as far as interior is concerned, my area, my consequences, sometimes the police, they find it very difficult to move from one place to another. Though 
they have a vehicle, a pickup vehicle, the police station, they have a big vehicle, but that vehicle is old now, almost four years. So I am urging the ministry to provide them at least two pickup if, if the police, if they can have, in my constituencies. Because these are things, you know, that is affecting the police. Like also, if you look at the, 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 the finance and economic affairs of the Gambia, like um, it was projected that in 2022, uh, the economy will grow by 4.5%. It was projected in 2021 that the economy will grow by 4.5%. Uh, but because of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, that is why the economy of the Gambia could not grow. But the Ministry of Finance, they came up with a modest and a robust uh, projection that the economy will grow by 3.6 percent this year. So I think uh, the Ministry of Finance, they are facing a lot of challenges. And then remember, Gambia is a tax-based economy. So I am urging on Gambians, let us pay tax. If you call yourself a Muslim and you call yourself a Christian, you have to pay tax. If you don't pay tax, if you die, God is going to judge you for that. So Gambia is a tax-based economy. So we have to pay tax. You know, Gambia's tax compliance is the problem. Because if you percentage, you see how many people, how many percent or Gambians are paying tax in this country. If at all it is 100 percent, I am telling you, Ministry of Finance is only collecting 55 percent. 45 percent is your loss. And the same Gambians are the people who are going to complain. Government is not doing A, government is not doing B. Go to my community. I will give a brighter example of Bansang. If you go to my, my, my place, whereby I have more than 2,000 or 2,500 compounds in Bansang. But there is a specific place in Bansang. I am not going to mention the name of that particular place. But we have eight cabilos. But there is this cabilo. They are 100% tax compliance. But the other cabilos, some of them, they will call themselves... We are the owners. We are the owners. You know, the Lord Lansaroldi. We are the owners. But they don't pay tax. Five years, some of them, they don't pay tax. Five years. So how can the country move when people are not paying tax? So we have to try and pay tax if we want this country to move forward. So this is the problem. And, and also the Minister of um, Youth and Sports, we all have seen before Gambians, we used to watch football match. When we have our games here, we go to the independent stadium, we watch matches, we support our team, but at the end of the day, we cannot qualify. It. But I think we have to thank the Minister of Youth and Sports for registering that great achievement. Last year, Gambia participated in the just concluded Cup of Nations. So these are achievements by the government. So the Minister of Youth, Gambia have qualified, and we also have seen uh, what have happened in the Commonwealth and also in the Turkey uh, Athletics Championship. The Gambia, our athletes, they have done extremely well. Now, presently, if Gambia is to meet any country, whether in terms of football or athletics, you know, they get scared because now there is no Mino in football because Gambia have changed the narrative, and this is what we all want. But yet still, I am urging on the youth and sports minister also to look into the affairs of the youth of this country. Because sometimes, if you look at the unemployment rate of the youth in this country, sometimes the figure, the figure is high. But sometimes, you ask yourself, are Gambian youth, are they willing to work? Are Gambian youth, are they willing to work? But remember, we all cannot be in offices. So if, we want, we, if you, you cannot want everything on a silver plate, and at, the end of, and at the end of the day, you want to blame the government of the day. So I am urging my fellow youths, please, let us try to create a venue for ourselves. Even if government did not employ us, we can be our own self-employers in one way or the other. Because I will give a brighter example. Like a, my brother's son came from the U.S. He has a place where he is working. I am just going to give you an example. He went out in town to find someone who is going to work at that place. But he could not get anyone in Bansang. But all those who are working in that place are foreigners. So at the end, when those people have been there for many years and they start generating something, the same governments are going to complain. Government didn't empower us. So please, I want us to change the narrative 
and then we can change it if we are ready. And then before I take my seat, Mr. Honorable Speaker, I would also like the line ministries, like as one of my colleagues said, I would like them to tell us their success stories next year. Let them tell us their success stories and also some of the, their challenges at their various ministries and then the way forward. Then from there we can know where we are heading. But as a government, we should not be scared or we should not fear if we want to highlight our challenges before the public. Highlighting your challenges will pave way for you to have a solution. So various ministries, I thank you so much, the Vice President and the President of the Republic of the Gambia, the National Assembly, the media fraternity. I thank each and every one of you, uh, Mr. Honorable Speaker. I thank you very so much for giving me this opportunity. I beg to take my seat. Thank you. Thank you very much, member for Upper Flood West. I now invite the member for Lower Salu. Thank you, um, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. And literally, I um, thank the Vice President and the Ministers in Cabinet. Um, um, thank you. Um, I also thank the President of the Republic of the Gambia for doing the right thing that is expected from him. Before going further, um, Honorable Speaker, we must see the truth with a solution. What the President should do, he do it. The responsibility that is charged to the President to appoint ministers, um, head of department agencies, that is money to do it. But a president cannot be a minister, being a police officer, what our um, um, fellow says, or being a parliamentarian. Each responsibility is charged a particular person. If you cannot do it, you resign. I have to stress on this, Honorable Speaker. If you mention a successor, then you come up with challenges. But we can able to tax our brains to, to go to success on that um, um, challenges. Honorable Speaker, what we are adopting as a Gambia, we have to change our attitudes. Whoever is charged in your responsibility, you fear on what people are saying, but you will never fear God. Judgment. The President gave you that money to charge on a particular department or a ministry. We have to see it here. We will see it. The member for Combo South said corruption. We have to see it here. Many corruptions are going in this country. At the end of the day, they just put it on the, on the carpet. When you say, I began to scare, if the judiciary now are corrupt, uh, Honorable Speaker, where are we going now? You see it there. If they are corrupt now, because if, if uh, millions of dialysis are called in a, liquid, in a particular, um, that should um, bring justice to the government people, them are corrupt, then where are we? You will see it there. And we must say it. Not only judicial, go to the uh, Trans Gambia Bridge. What happens there also? The same thing. And you never had all those people who are involved are victims or sentenced to, or to, to other, or, or, or economic crime or, or, or other things. They yeah, just keep silence. Means those people who are given a responsibility to charge in a particular office are helping those ones doing the corruption. We must say the truth. We are 58 in, in number. How many police are sitting down there watching us? And we are paid, and we will not take the responsibility. We will say that whether you do it or not, people must say it. Whether you like it or not, people must say it. 
the president is all crop. His excellence is all crop, and he's not there to whoever wants to make this corruption, he goes with you. No. Why not the ones who are appointed? Asking the entire crop people to come to your decks. And why is your boss is not doing it? Honorable Speaker. Then this country will not move. Because when you are in a particular response, within a six months, a particular year, a, a, um, year you build um, 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 story buildings, driving um, limousine cars, where do you get that money? We have to speak the truth and bring solutions. You're going to be here more things. At the end of the day, when you talk, they go and report you. And we are passed on that era. I'm representing the people of Lower Salm here. Nobody else I'm representing. The reason why we are supporting the president, he said he's built, he will build this country where people don't expect to be built. He has a vision. But whether people are helping the president on that vision? No. We will speak the truth. Yes. Madam Speaker, I will start on the economic and um, finance and economic affairs. The, the reverse budget came here on this 30 percent increment. I'm not saying it's an increment there. And um, thank you, um, uh, the minister who brought it here. It's not an increment. That increment that we say is an increment. The day that, that was approved, everything escalated. What, because the time we, we are approving that, um, that 30 percent, it was uh, a bag of rice is 1,500. After the approval, it's 1,675 dollars. A gallon of oil, it was one, uh, 2,150 dollars. Now it's 3,000 plus now. So I start right. Two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. Two thousand three hundred. Sugar is escalated. Now where 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 the ministry take his stand now to adjust that thirty percent increment? He could have even leave it the way it is. Because now those people, the old um, those um, low income earners are suffering. We who are paid more than what they are earning, we enjoy how this, go, this, this country can move. It's going to go. Because the, those people who are um, doing the job, they are suffering. They will, they will crop them. They will crop them. What the vice says, he said, they will not, sorry to say it, but I will quote you. The vice said, they, they will not see any police officer taking a bribe. They will, they will take a bribe. Because what they are, and on their salaries, it's not there to survive their family. And these police officers, they make me to sleep, you device, and others. We have old list. I don't have old list, but you have old list. And this old list must protect any of that um, a particular uh, minister is charged. Mistakenly, you don't do, you, you, are, you are there in a civil uh, policeman. You go for CV. CV. Yes. And this police officer who paid a less than six thousand dollars. Now a bag of rice, one thousand six hundred and seventy-five. A gallon of oil, two thousand three hundred. A bag of sugar. Not all bag. We buy this um, retail uh, kilos of sugar. How can that police officer now to take a responsibility? If I do go him, he will take it. <laughs> Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. We the ex executives, we have to look backwards to see that there are people who are serving us. Any minister is success here is, is your single staff, is your, is your staff that make you uh, succeed. Even you, Speaker, the reason why you are working uh, um, 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 the way you are, because of your staffs. You didn't know that are helping you. We have to focus on these young ones, whereby they can help their family. But without that, the same corruption that we are talking, we will end up seeing it here. But it will never resolve. Honorable Speaker, 
This increment, I said, it's just it's just there to help the 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 life skills earners, not the young ones. Definitely, honourable speaker, the single servants is need to be looked at on their affairs, because I thought the president also, um, the the minister would advise um, the president on this issue of surplus. Definitely, honourable speaker, our. Uh, single servants, definitely, they are suffering, Honorable Speaker. We need to bring um, a policy, or even this salary um, structure, make it, sorry, this, this great issues. We go away on these great issues. PMO make a, a, a press release. Now, whether the PMO was communicated with the Minister of Finance or not, we don't know. But there's a fraud there. Because that case could have helped the, the, the single servant and us. But then the thirty percent just come for us, not the, the low income earners. No, Honorable Speaker. And we are representing these people. We cannot all come to this chamber. We all go and occupy a, a, a ministry a post. No. Chance is given to you. Then when you go to um, uh, um, uh, exercise that chance, then remember the young ones who, are, who, who you are serving. But no, whoever is charged in a particular office, you, you enrich yourself. We have to say this crops on. Whether your you, you ear wants to hear it or not, if it doesn't want to hear it, you go out. But we will say it. <laughs> we will say it, Honorable Speaker. Um, I will go to the um, Minister of Agriculture. Honorable Speaker, I will stress because I'm a farmer. Agriculture, if I was the president, that ministry, I will not give any, I will oversee that ministry myself. Honorable Speaker, the amount of grants that comes to, the, um, to this, um, this country is too much. And I defy with you, Honorable. You said there's a success, there's no success in agriculture sector. There's no success in agriculture. It's only a failure that is in agriculture. And if you go there, you find doctors in agriculture. We hate the holders in agriculture. Then why the country is not moving? And you can check all these people, all this stuff on agriculture. No, none of them is poor. <laughs> none of them is poor. They will not show up. But those ones who know each we know each other, we know them. What they are having and what they are capable to do. You can get how many grants are here. And these grants will never go to the success of the, the detriment of our people. We went to um, an oversight committee, that's agriculture. What we have seen at the site of these um, um, rice fields, Honorable Speaker, it's not encouraging, Honorable. What people are now doing, if this, and in fact, the worst part of it, you will be in a particular staff. When you had, um, there is a project, will, uh, there is a project coming. You will make a comment of that project. You, you, uh, you, you, now you apply to that project, you are moved to that project. You will be paid salaries. No, sorry, the, the one that you will eat for secondment, you will pay for allowance, you go in for, for salaries. In fact, you are paid more than even the, the, the PS, or in fact, the ministers. And all these projects go, go for these um, vehicles. <coughs> and, and this night allowance is and party of Nagamna. Honorable, we have, to, we have to stick on this. And in fact, this, this grounds comes to the parliament, uh, this um, in country, without the notice of the parliament, in fact. They, they are the only particular sector who will sw swallow all those grants. If they cannot swallow everything, the less of part of it goes back to the, uh, the, the donors. And we said, this is the backbone of the country. That's agriculture. No, I said no. Because what the money that enters in agriculture, it doesn't go to any ministry. Go and see the forest.
You saw Sankule Kunda, right? Yes. You can help me, Honorable. Well, Sankule Kunda, um, the, the Jahali Pachas, Jenjambure, Honorable. When we are talking of uh, uh, Ukraine and Russia, honest to God, if we develop those for us, we will not take off this, um, um, this um, uh, rise going for 600 and 1,675. No. And in fact, the person who is in fact trying to um, grab a little bit, that's Marufa, they are trying to frustrate Marufa. Now, where are we heading? Because of a particular interest. Contact is given to a, a person where you don't make this, uh, um, um, how to call it, um, this site, um, this land development, are, give, are given to a particular project. But this project, they must give, give a, a something to tips to the person who is going to get the project. We have to stop this tip issue. That's the problem I said. It is also the That's not true. It's not true. Can you translate? Honorable Speaker, we have to take the boon by the horn. We speak the truth and we act honestly. For we the private, we have only a paper, a pen and paper. If any if anything comes, we approve it. We approve it. Only paper for us. But for them, they will swallow everything. <laughs> everything. And in fact, it's a, this, our budget is a program based budgeting. And none of these ministers will, will say, or oh, oh, the technocrats, I went around to know a, a particular region what is their problem and what their con constraint. All this, uh, on, on their all de uh, development budgets, you will never go there. They will never go around. That we are going for, we are going for this program-based budgeting. When the budget will come, that a particular place in, in Lower Salum, that the health, the health facility, this is what is um, um, what is um, how to call it, um, failing there, or what is that, what is not what is not going, like drugs, buildings, you understand, equipments. We, we, that um, um, health facilities is there since when when. Um, when Queen, in fact, is not born yet. Honorable, <laughs> we have to be very serious on what we are doing. We have to be very serious on what we are doing. We are representing people. And that, that, that masses, honorable, that we are representing, we need to check on, on their survival. They don't need anything. Today we have everything. Ask myself, in fact. I am I'm driving a, a vehicle that a person that in, in, who voted me in, he even doesn't have a fare to go to, um, to, to, to his successor. Agriculture, we must, we must bring a way out to, 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 to see what, 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 will, what will progress agriculture. But not this project that they will never. Honorable Speaker, and going to um, interior, Honorable Speaker. Yeah, I thought the minister also will, will advise the president on the issues surrounding the, the country, the crime rates, the killings. It's too much honorable. People are even scared in their houses now. Honorable Speaker. And again, I will stand to blame little the Minister of Justice. Because you cannot catch a thief after, after going to um, a, a court procedures, you just, you just fine him for two, um, two months, three months. And that thief will start working with the big boards, you know, I'm, I'm the one who do this. That place is my house. Honorable. No. 
whoever do offenses, whoever, whoever did um, this break and enters or kill, I'm saying, me, I'm saying, whoever kills, they kill you. They will stop this. This human right issue, we cannot compile our old self in this human right issue, no. These are Western regulations. Just listen to what happens. A girlfriend kills his um, um, a boyfriend. <laughs> huh? Honorable. This is serious. Don't laugh. It's serious. I'm saying, I'm saying, whoever kills, they kill you. Unless it will stop. This is what President Jamie was doing here. Everything stops. What human rights do you mean? Now you kill, you kill my only lady with no condition, with nothing. At the end of the day, what the honorable member is saying, and in fact, that particular, because the boy who is killed, he's well skilled, you know. He's a, he's a natural resource, resources. And he has a bright future. And now you make the nation to lose that one with his entire family. And at the end of the day, you are just locked for um, maybe 10 years old, five years. And you are still feeding that guy or that, uh, that, uh, that lady. Now the, the, the nation will take charge. I will feed you every day. Bread uh, in the morning, bread and tea. The rice and something else. You are watching TV like hell. I said, no, if it's going to happen, in fact, let, let the government take charge now. I will not feed you. Seven o'clock, you go to the, uh, the rice field. You have only break when, when you come back home. Honorable Speaker, the killings is too much. The robbery is too much. The interior means that you have to take charge. And the IG. You are all protected, but our people are not, the masses is, 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 they are scared, Honorable Speaker. We have to say the truth. Nobody feels to go, even your, your business area, in fact, alone. What is happening? We have, we have seen it. It's, it's unacceptable, Honorable. Whoever kills, I'm saying this, whoever kills, let them kill you. You break and enter, you go for hard labor. The what the President Jimmy was saying. You go for hard labor. Those support for us and um, for us around uh, Sierra North, they could defeat them. You feed the nation and feed yourself. Honestly, it will all stop. If it, it cannot stop, but it will minimize the, the crime rate. This small game, every day you are, you are hearing people are killing, people are robbing. In fact, this criminal come with their knives in your house. <laughs> they blow right. Give me or I kill you. You will give. Me, I will give. <laughs> I will give. You are going to die. I will give you. We have to take charge. The office of the IGP. You need to protect your men, that the police. And in fact, those are not protected, in fact. Today, if there is a crime in a particular place, you ask for vehicle, they will not go. But then the IG will have a vehicle, a utility vehicle. The minister will have a vehicle and a utility vehicle. And now the masses are suffering. Honorable Speaker. And in fact, you go to the budget line, 900 million, 900,000, sorry for vehicle maintenance. Which vehicle are going to maintenance? Might be the office vehicle, but go around all police stations, there are vehicles. Sometimes, in fact, you request, you request vehicle, they said there's no fuel. Now you, the victim, have to pull from your pocket and give them. That shouldn't be honorable. The office is charged based on your responsibility. If you cannot do it, quick. Uh, Your Excellency, you give me this possible, I cannot handle it. I resign. Somebody come in. Not everything should be mechanized or this must, la must last in them. No. Take charge. And Honorable um, the Vice President, I respect you. May I with you there, 100%. Because you say the truth. 
You find that office and you leave, you will leave that office. You are a technocrat. And we trust you. And you support the president. What, Honorable Vice President, don't mind what people are saying. Just speak the truth. God is with you. And again, the entire responsibility of these ministers, they are all under you. Say them the truth. Honorable, the president is a political appointee, which we put him there. But he's very honest. When you are doing the right thing, you are always with him. Because nobody comes and momomo on, on his ear. No. <laughs> Honorable Vice President, if this country sink, you make us sink. We have to see the truth. I'm not afraid of any, any, anybody here. <laughs> Nobody. I will say the truth. If I shake my hand, because you don't give me. You don't give me that. If I shake my hand, you, you, you just, you just uh, bang your hand. Don't give me your hand. And again, nobody in this chamber loves the president more than I do. Even himself, I love him more than what he is. <laughs> so he, he's a man, man of wisdom. We cannot say it here all. Not that because I'm standing here supporting the president. No, no, no. He said, company me to develop Gambia. This is what we are, we are, we are, we are doing. It. And we are going to die for it. And any day he mistakenly do it, I said, uh, President, no, 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 this is not the way that, that, that's the way. Hey, leaders have, have been there, not, not being somebody who, who is knowledgeable. No, we help the leader. This is what uh, Obama said, when you are hoping your president fails, means the country fails. And if we do young ones, we will not allow this country to fail. Whoever, whoever is not doing the right thing, we will tell you. Whether you are the speaker, the deputy speaker, the minister, the president, we will tell you. Because you are all aging now. I'm age of 30, uh, 32 now. And I want to sit down there where you are. So, honorable speaker, I have been taking the debate so long. Um, I stand to um, take my seat. Um, again, to thank everybody who are here, and let people take their own responsibility. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Member for Lower Salum. Honorable Member, I just, I'm just worried that if you tell armed robbers that when you attack, when you are attacked, you will give them, they will always come for you especially if you say it publicly. And honorable members, I want us to remind ourselves that we, are, we have all the powers. We have the legislative powers and oversight powers. Let's never forget that. I now call the honorable member for Fonyi Kansala. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker. Uh, I indeed welcome the Minister of, uh, sorry, the Vice President uh, and other ministers that are also present. Uh, it's indeed a great day, as we all believe, as Honorable Members. <clears throat> the vision and mission of this country is in our hands. So better we stand firm to attain its wishes and aspirations. Uh, it's indeed great. I thank the President for according his State of Nation address constitutionally. And Parliament and parliamentary proceedings, there are elements that will change the narratives in the workforce, the security sector, agricultural sector, health sector, 
educational sector, and a whole lot of sectors within governance. Honorable Speaker, the youths of today in the Gambia, as the look implies, skills are of essence. No government in the world can employ people 100% or its citizens 100%. But skills is of core for any meaningful development that is ready to earn its aspiration for the youth folk. Partly, uh, there are areas that this ministry is doing extremely well in terms of uh, skills, uh, the GIZ and the YEP. It's instrumentally doing well. But I believe the concentration factor is based more on the combos. The rural areas are left. So I believe so, let's work to develop skills, to encourage skills in the rural side. Not only policies, programs, aspirations, we base it in the, the combos. But you realize some of these skills and the GIs that have a lot of youths are now venturing into their own businesses. But if it is a percentage, it's about 80% uh, are all from uh, the, the, the urban areas. The rural folk are left off without being in form of skills. This is why, in order to avert the Bagwell syndrome of migration, I think the Minister of Concerns will revisit and involve the rural areas to see how they can be uh, a better improve in the rural sector. In the Minister of Youth and Sport, uh, I dare ask myself football, games, athletic sports. We have an independent stadium that is here for decades. Build. We will inform vividly the stadium is no more under its beds for games and footballs. Either we go outside countries to play matches, errors of orders. We want to be informed. We want to be educated. What is the status quo of the independent stadium? How far are they ready? Funds that are given, we want to know the outcome of the development. When you go around the independent stadium, bricks that are not even in the right, sometimes you wonder who the contractor is and how was he awarded the contract. One week or two, you see the bricks will be you know, falling down, you know, lack of proper whatever. So these are issues that give project to the right people that can attain and also be more of importance in whatever they're going to do so far, those contract aspects are concerned. So I believe uh, the ministry concerns should take note of this. When you move around to uh, Minister of Local Government and Lands, and also the road authority, or whatever, by the look of things, when you go within uh, my own constituency, from Sangayor down to before Kanfenda, there is a gully eroded roadside that is very risky for the other side of the road. It has been echoed, deliberated in form, yet still something is not done out of it. Either the villagers within concerned areas will take it onto themselves to make sure they do their taste or work to see that either a temporary bridge has been uh, 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 laid for the passage in the other side to be, to be helpful. Cognizant of to the same Tobiam, whereby most of the areas is all gullied, eroded, and it's not even safe as we are in the rainy season. So I believe the line ministry concerns should take a look of those areas and see how best they can also address. And as they are also uh, taxpayers, and I believe in my constituency, uh, they are very compliant, as my honorable colleagues are saying, in terms of tax, and they, I, I believe it's, it's, it should come back to them. In the area of agriculture, honorable, uh, honorable speaker, the president talks about uh, agricultural modernization. It is good to hear, and we believe this is the best call that we think any responsible nation could realize is food self-sufficiency. If the modernization is there. 
if the modernization is going to be facts, not based on messages or say. Why? Because I say so. The former regime, tractors were given to seasonal farmers across the country, irrespective of your region, irrespective of your geopolitical uh, location. But in the beginning, all those tractors were taken from farmers left nothing sold at a reasonable prices. Today, when you look at the, the set of phones, no tractor was even given. So I want to ask the Minister of Agriculture, what methods did they use in distributing those tractors? We want to know. Because we are all taxpayers, equal opportunity to projects or issues that we think is a sheer cake for the government. And we talk about national development, a region or a particular constituency or a particular cohort should not be left behind. In the area of health, as I took office in my constituency, I went round to the health facility of Buyam General Hospital. Honorable Speaker, uh, it's rather unfortunate and it's sad indeed you see the acute post unit we are fresh from delivery, leaks with water. <coughs> Children will be sharing the same bed as I am speaking to you, Buyam General Hospital. When you go to the hospital, as you pass, you see good structures labeled. You'll be amazed. But I believe go to that particular hospital, you will even start crying because the welfare of those people and those people visiting that particular health facility are off off. The acute were uh, from bath. Only one toilet is there. One toilet. And the other shocking moment is you realize that today in Fonyi, as I'm speaking to you, the length and breadth of Fonyi, women are refusing to go to antenatal, antenatal care because of what? The rooms are not conducive. Staircase, took this wood, prepare as if a waiting room. Women will go discomfort in that particular area. This is causing havoc to the people of Fonyi and the satellite areas that do visit that particular hospital. Today you talk of, you know, trying to build that interesting momentum for the citizens, either the workers in that particular uh, health facility, you could have instruments, whatever, but their own place where they will uh, stay, nurses, senior nurse officers, heads of department within the, uh, at the particular uh, 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 hospital, roofs, it's raining, it rains as if you are in the outside world. When it's, uh, it starts raining, those people in those houses will now pack their baggages, luggages aside. When rain stops, they return their normal chairs. This is what's happening. Three weeks back, I was from that particular hospital. I spoke to the minister, and I think this is urgency is needed in order to avoid that particular situation. Honorable Speaker, when you look at the minor theater, the table that is there is rather unfortunate. How do you do surgery? I ask, how do you people do surgery in this particular manner of a table like this? The major theater is empty, a room without nothing. So these are hard facts affection that is affecting the life and the livelihood of people. Healthcare is a must to every Gambian, irrespective of where you belong. And I think it has to be addressed now so as to see the benefit of it. If not, women will be having issues. They will not even go to the hospital. They have lose confidence in the area. So therefore, I think let's do something better to avert uh, the current happenings. The other thing that I've also went around, as I was uh, doing a, a constituency tour within my constituency, hydrants in which disasters of course fire. Uh, three weeks ago, a major fire, fire outbreak happens Honorable, in nearby hospital. Honorable, can I observe you? Huh? Can I observe you? A point of order, Honorable Speaker. Is it an observation or point a point of, of order. order? A point of order. Okay, may we hear the point of order? Thank you. I'm rising on 
clause 30. Scope of debate. Debate upon any motion or amendment to any motion or upon any bill, part of a bill or amendment to a bill, shall be relevant thereto, except in a case of motion for debate on adjournment debate. These are relevant issues are affecting its constituency, but let's narrow our lens down to the policy and program of government presented here by His Excellency, produced through those intervention, how we can better those uh, ideas given to us. We, are, we believe that ideas are cross-cutting, but we must also be what, uh, be more direct to the policy and program of government present to us and wait on the adjournment debate. You can elaborate more, ample time, on the challenges of your constituency. Thank you so much. Thank you, honorable member. There was a similar point of order. And, uh, oh, okay. and uh, I did say that the president's speech is cross-cutting. But I've also observed that uh, people are using it as if we are on an adjournment debate. And people will take it and then talk about their consequency problems. So I want to observe that members, please, let's restrict ourselves to the issues and generally. And when we go to the adjournment debate, consequency concerns will come up and you'll be able to raise them. Please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I believe I'm on track as I'm uh, deliberating these are facts and speeches of the President that he has alluded in his uh, wonderful speech that he had laid before us. Uh, in the interior, Honorable Speaker, uh, this is one of the most important ministry and also as a sole protector for our welfare, easy movement of goods and services protection of life and properties internally. Uh, I believe that the immigration department could be watched properly to see an informed decision in their revenue collection. <coughs> Bundung alone collects more than $2 million a year. But you realize that some of this collection point with the Minister of, of uh, how to call it, uh, 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 interior minister, uh, uh, immigrations would dare rent taxes to go on collections of those revenues. So I believe the line ministers should take note and change the approach in which we will gain more revenue in the near future. From Fonyi down to the Combos, there is no police station that you go and find a movable vehicle. All is kaput in those areas. So I believe when we talk of interior or police, police do this, police do this, they have vehicles to do their patrols. So I believe what some of my honorable colleagues are saying, when you assess the ministers within their ministerial portfolios and permanent secretaries, a vehicle, utility vehicle is given. But you go to police stations, no single vehicles are found. When you have cases, they'll even tell you, either you bought a taxi, go and come with that particular momentum. So I think it's high time when we talk of to change the internal security of the country, we need to be very cognizant and we need to be very pragmatic in making so tools are readily available for those units to perform their functions. And again, when you go, go around patrolling the police and uniforms, it's a problem. Some of the officers, they need new uniforms. So let's work on with the ministry to make sure that is, that is also addressed. And the order was remunerations of those uh, services. I will still stand here and echo and continue to say and continue to defend the security, the armed and security forces for their wonderful jobs that they're doing in the Gambia. Why? Because you cannot pay an allowance of a police officer, a sergeant, $250 as his what? House rent. All of us, the executive, the legislative and the judiciary, arms of government, key uh, 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 stakeholders within. How much do we have? What are the allowances that we have? A police officer, a sergeant is paid $250 as his house rent. Which, rent, which house? Even in our phone, you do not even have a house in that particular niche. So I think let, let's revisit some of these affections.
that our armed and security forces are facing. In order for us to have a robust security checks and balances, for us to have people who are ready to make sure they implement the law to the latter. In that also, you talk about the accommodative services. Stations you go, sometimes accommodation is a problem. You know, so I think uh, the Minister of Concern should also work on that to make sure they improve the accommodation. And also fisheries. Years past, we had a fire disaster of Minister of Fisheries, the office. But still, I haven't seen a report. If it is available, I think I will also ask the, the, the honorable members for us to have a vivid sharing of it and see what can we get out of it and also see the causes of the fire and what had led that particular fire to be informed of the current happenings. <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, from the Fonies near to the Combo's end, there is no hydrant within that particular area. I believe the empowerment of the fire and rescue services is utmost important. As I was saying, it's not about my constituency, but it's about a particular whole region where it's only two villages that have those hydrants. A fire disaster occurs. Fire and rescue service could not do better. They had to run from one village to another. So if it happens in Kalaji, you have to come to Biam or Kanilaito to get the hydrant. If it happens in, in Bese, you have to come to either Biam or Kanilai to do that. So I think the government should work with NAWEC to see how they can diversify and improve the hydrant. And again, the pressure of those hydrants is also very important because what we have seen in that area is uh, compatibility of the fire and rescue services uh, uh, cars are not compatible with those hydrants. So I, have, uh, I think they should do utmost enough to be speaking with NAWEC to see how best they can also avert that for prosperity. Honorable Speaker, higher education, science and technology. Tibet education is core to every fundamental uh, individual. So I believe so. Uh, let's see how do we diversify some of this educational sector to improve the status quo. The University of the Gambia, they have a campus, but yet still about 70% as we have alluded, the speech of the president is already at, at, at that stage. But still, students are roaming from one area to Brikama, Bakau, sorry, Brikama, Kanifin, and also Faraba. So I think it's high time now. For that student to have that comfortness in education, he has to be, he or she has to be stationed in one particular area in order for you to see a yield dividend in terms of education. So I believe uh, we could work better in that. In basic and secondary education, Gambia College, as my colleagues alluded, I second points whereby government should look critically why the privatization of Gambia College. Is there any measures, donors, or whatever partner that they can do to revive to make sure it is owned and fully funded, accommodated? The Gambia College can have decisions over their students. If not, if I pay my money, I have the right to accept my posting or reject. Either having qualitative teachers in those regions is always a problem. Most of them will prefer being in the combos than going to the provincial Gambia because of incentive. So they need to look at the incentive sector. And again, the Gambia College also in the School of Nursing need to be considered. Most of health facilities, when you go, you see you know, uh, uh, unqualified nurses. Qualified ones we either take up to MRC or they go to private health care. But if you're taking ownership sponsored by the government and you're bonded, you will make sure you uh, participate or be, be cognizant that you have a mission and a vision to complete. So I think let's look at vividly in those institutions to see that we return back to those days whereby the college is accommodated, it takes care of everything, you are bonded, and you will serve for the period of your bond. I make sure, ask the Honorable Minister and the department concerned to consider this, make a study, a feasibility study on this, how do we go back to how it was for the betterment of the Gambian and her people. The last part is my area, defense and security. Today, all of us in this parliament, happily seated comfortably, as a country, happily seated comfortably, the security is okay. 
the security is well fitted. I believe it is a duty unto all of us to put all hands on deck to make sure we defend this country to the core. If it even heralds our life, let's sacrifice our life to make sure peace reigns in this country. I wonder sometimes, I look at back. Policies, programs, security sector reform is good. But we want proper implementation now. We want to see the dividend of those signs that these sectors that we are talking of, the policies that we are saying, is, is, we've, we've seen them. It's very clear unto us. So these are hard facts that we think. The care all more, an incident had happened. What measures are put in place? What do we think the occurrences will not happen? The causes of those occurrences, do we have any benchmark that we have did to make sure that particular area is revisited, studied, and also measures are laid? Issues of the customers, Senegal, uh, fracas. It had happened. The entire length and breadth of Fonis down to the combos, education was a problem. So I believe we should have policies and programs. If it occurs, what will be the next plan for that uh, educational sector? Security is paramount and is the bedrock of any meaningful country. I believe today we could be ready to take ownership of the security. Because you could see some quarters, security is not owned fully by the Gambian people. It's in the hands of foreigners. How and how soon are we ready to take ownership of our security? Our internal information, is it with us? Our internal protection, is it with us? The president is a Gambian and he needs to be protected by Gambians. So I believe every national assembly should work on making sure we do that particular option. Today, Honorable Speaker, I submit to this August Assembly that it's a worrisome that is going within the internal security of the Gambia. Why do I say so? Cotos, a group, a particular group is still affected, been laid, branded. They are discomfort in their security performance. Why? Because levied on coups, 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 coups. 2017, 2018, 2019, three weeks again, the same people have been taxed and said they wanted to manipulate, so they wanted to take over coup. Records are evidently with me, and I think the ministers should work on to make sure a board of inquiry is set to, de to this effect and to make sure that security, there is no politics. There is no tribe, there is no religion. It is the life and the life of every country. And I believe one tribe should not be singled out from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2022. It is one tribe that is mentioned. The lists are all available. So I think it's high time ownership should be taken to our security. And it's high time a general board of inquiry is supposed to be set on this. And we know if they are defaulted the people, let them be sent to a competent law and they are jailed to make sure we avert any form of those. If not, investigation should be done in the Gambia Armed Forces. It's not going well. And we'll say it, we'll continue to say it, the people are not happy and they are demoralized and they are affected on their daily basis. Tribe doesn't build a country. Tribe doesn't satisfy the development of country. Tribe doesn't reign to make sure that particular country works well. But we unify together to make sure we see a rebuilding country. And I believe a tribe is segregated and on daily basis they are affected. Three weeks ago, their names have been labeled again of a coup. So I think it's Honorable right Speaker, to... Thank you very much. Point of order. It's against parliamentary... Honorable Member? Yes, I was trying to raise a point of order. Matters at the court should not be discussed in the floor of the assembly. Uh, thank you. Indeed. Honorable members, I've been observing some of my colleague Garanka MPs who are yawning. I think they are not, they are, they are, they are feeling a little bit tired and hungry. I so want to suspend sessions for an hour. It's about quarter past two o'clock, and then we break off until quarter past three when we shall resume again. The assembly now stands suspended until 15.15 p.m.
p.m. Thank you.